Now, when we think about PC processors, desktops and laptops, two names come to mind, Intel and AMD. Of course, we now also have the era of Windows on ARM, so we could mention Qualcomm, but the biggest market share belongs to either Intel or AMD. And there's this war between the two to who offers the most performance, the best price, who has the biggest market share and so on. But did you know there's a market where there are millions of devices sold that AMD has 100% of the market share? Intel doesn't even have a look in. It's kind of AMD's hidden empire. Millions of devices sold, AMD solely provides the processor. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna be looking at the PlayStation, the Xbox, and the Steam Deck as three really important gaming devices. Two of them, of course, are consoles. One is handheld because they constitute the main part of a hidden empire that AMD has. Not Intel, not anybody else, but AMD's hidden empire. So it all started almost 50 years ago when the first home gaming console uh, was released that started to sell in the millions and that was the Atari 2600. I had one, uh, me and my brother spent many hours playing Space Invaders and Asteroids uh, and so on on one of those devices and that really set the tone for kind of uh, gaming consoles that we still see today. Basically a unit that you plug into a TV or a monitor and you've kind of got games that come in different formats, cartridges, discs, so on, and some joysticks, joy pads that you play with, uh, and that's it. That's the same format, but obviously things have advanced. Now, it was released in 1977, and it used a variant of the 8-bit 6502 CPU. Now, 8-bit CPUs reigned until the late 1980s, when devices like the Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive, depending on where you are in the world, uh, switched to the 16-bit Motorola 68000. Now, 32-bit came around in 1994 when you had the 32-bit Sony PlayStation and it had the MIPS R3000 CPU. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And then the first Xbox was released in 2001 with a 32-bit Intel Pentium 3 variant. So before this AMD era, this hidden AMD empire that we're talking about, there were various iterations of both the PlayStation and the Xbox. As I said, the first PlayStation 1994 MIPS R3000, that's a RISC uh, processor, 32 bits. Then in 2000, you get the PlayStation 2, which had a kind of a special processor in it called the Emotion Engine, but it was in fact based on a 64-bit MIPS R5900, 5900, with a 28-bit uh, SIMD, that's Single Instruction Multiple Data Instructions, and a graphic synthesizer as a coprocessor. This is before we got to the days of, you know, CPU, GPU, as we see so frequently today, even in smartphones, all up to the desktop. Uh, this was the kind of the first iteration of that, the Emotion Engine with a 64-bit CPU and then this uh, GPU coprocessor. Then we had the Xbox, uh, which came out with a Pentium 3 in it, basically, and a variant of the NVIDIA GeForce 3 for the uh, GPU. And I remember when it came out, I was like thinking, well, this is just a PC in a box with joysticks or joypads connected to it, and that's a fair fair argument, but it obviously was a good formula because look, here we are today with the PlayStation and the Xbox still being dominant in this area. 2005, we then had the Xbox 360 and Microsoft switched direction. They went to the Microsoft X CPU, which had three 64-bit power PC cores in it, similar to those in the PlayStation 3, which we'll talk about in a minute, and an ATI Radeon X uh, 1800 variant. And then uh, the PlayStation 3 now with the cell processor, so with the Emotion Engine and the cell processor, which was based on 64-bit power PC uh, with the different uh, processing elements for, again, SIMD, and it had a kind of an equivalent of an NVIDIA 7800 GTX GPU in it, which was called the Reality Synthesizer. So again, we haven't quite got to that 
CPU and GPU thing in the PlayStation world. We're seeing that more in the Xbox uh, 360. So that brings us all the way up to 2006. But then since then, AMD's empire really started to get built. So 2013, the PlayStation 4 with a, today what we would consider a fairly standard uh, APU, application processing unit, with an eight core CPU and then an AMD Radeon GPU based on their uh, GCN architecture, which was kind of around like the level of Radeon HD 7870. So here, AMD have managed to convince Sony to go with the uh, AMD chip. They give them a CPU and a GPU all in one chip. We'll talk more about the advantage of that uh, in a minute. And really that kind of setup is what we have today uh, across the board. So you then had the Xbox One. There's only a few days between the announcements of these two systems. Again, an AMD APU, same CPU core uh, kind of uh, setup architecture. The clock speeds are different, the caches are different, all these kind of stuff, but basically the same thing, eight core 64-bit Jaguar CPU calls, and then again, a Radeon uh, GPU uh, based on the GCN architecture. Now, of course, over time, we've had various variations. We've had, you know, PlayStation 4 Pro, we've had the Xbox One uh, S. Now, these all have tweaked variations of this, having gone into all the details, all the different models that came out. But basically, uh, there were tweaks here and there, but this is the kind of what we had 2013. And then in 2020, starting with the Xbox, now the S and the X series, not to be confused with the Xbox One uh, X, for example, still AMD APU, now eight core Zen 2 based CPU and an AMD RDNA 2 based uh, GPU. PlayStation 5, very similar setup, again, difference in clock speeds and so on, depending on what each uh, kind of a customer wanted what Sony wanted, what Microsoft wanted, but we're using this as the kind of the standard template now since 2013. And then last but not least, we should mention the Steam Deck came out in 2022. So that's a handheld. The advantage here is it's kind of a PC in a handheld thing. It's running Steam. All the games that you have in your Steam library, you can run. It's got a quad core Zen 2. Uh, CPU and again an AMD RDNA based GPU. I've got my review. I've got a, uh, a Steam Deck here. I did a review of that here on this channel if that interests you. And Valve says the CPU has comparable performance to a Ryzen 3000 type desktop processor and the GPU performance to a Radeon RX 6000. So that's the kind of, uh, kind of ballpark they're in here. But as you can see, AMD completely dominating PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam Deck. But the question is why? Why have AMD managed to do this? Not it's a bad thing, I'm not saying why I like why oh why, but how did they manage to do this? Well, AMD provides both the CPU and the GPU in an APU, and that means it simplifies the overall architecture. You don't need a coprocessor in a different chip. You don't need to have a separate GPU that's somehow connected to a different bus and then it comes from different manufacturers and you have to get it all to work together. That's very possible, but it simplifies it. And of course that can reduce manufacturing costs, that can reduce time to market, that can affect the uh, buying power that Sony or Microsoft have with AMD because they can say, look, we're going to buy this many millions of this chip and so on. So having that provider who gives you the CPU and the GPU uh, is really kind of uh, beneficial for the console maker and of course for AMD. And AMD has been willing to collaborate closely with both Microsoft and Sony in creating the APU that they wanted, tailored to their specific needs. So for example, the console APUs are 64-bit only. So they can't run any 32-bit code, and that's something you don't currently get in a, a PC. PCs still have to be able to run 32-bit code. Uh, I've got a video here on this channel how uh, uh, Intel have proposed x86 64s uh, to get rid of some 32-bit elements but really because this is in a controlled environment it's the software that 
Sony want to put on it, it's the software that Microsoft want to put on it, doesn't have to be able to be backwardly compatible for the last 25 years and all this kind of stuff. It runs the software that they put on it, so they're able to be tailored. And AMD have been willing to do that. And also it's worth mentioning that by using the uh, industry standard x86-64, uh, certainly for desktop uh, computers, then that does simplify some aspects of the game development. So, you know, there are a lot of tools that are common across desktop development, let's say, you know, Unity or Unreal or other ones like that, that you find across some of these consoles as well. And of course, that reduces complexity, that reduces time for game development, that reduces porting and all that, because you are dealing with a similar uh, platform across Windows and the different platforms. So, Again, a win-win for everybody. But why not MIPS? Why not PowerPC, etc.? So previously, Sony and Microsoft use MIPS, PowerPC, Intel, NVIDIA GPUs. Why not now? Well, first of all, MIPS is dead. So that's one reason that's not being used anymore. PowerPCs are still alive, but uh, really just in servers now. And IBM don't have, or the PowerPC consortium or whoever's building it, don't have a kind of a GPU offering. So they could work with, let's say, NVIDIA, but that doesn't necessarily bring any advantages uh, over the AMD CPU-GPU combo. Now, Intel could replace AMD. That would be a relatively simple thing to do. Uh, Intel have APUs as well with both the CPU and the GPU on it. But there is some perceived underperformance of the Intel Arc GPUs. That means that Intel still needs to prove itself. Now, if it can do that, uh, let's say with Battle Mage, then maybe in the future there would be some uh, leeway to switch from uh, AMD to Intel. Of course, it would again depend on pricing and all that kind of stuff. So don't discount Intel at this stage, but AMD certainly have a solid uh, kind of reputation and a solid relationship with the console uh, makers. And the interesting one would be an ARM CPU with an in NVIDIA GPU. NVIDIA has a strong ARM relationship. It has an architectural uh, license, which means it can build its own ARM compatible CPUs. It also has our, uh, normal licenses, IP licenses, so it can license ARM's Cortex cores. Uh, and so it has built uh, for, for example, the uh, Nintendo Switch, that's an ARM CPU with an NVIDIA GPU. Also, you've got lots of other examples, including the Jetson kind of devices that I've reviewed many of those here on this channel for automotive as well. This combination of ARM CPU with NVIDIA GPU. So that could be a possibility. Don't discount that either. So what about the future? Well, it seems at the moment AMD's dominance will continue obviously the next gen consoles are in development when exactly they'll come out we don't know but they are in development and maybe they are quite far along uh, in development we'll have to see how often these consoles come out every well, six years seven years that kind of thing it's, it's you know it just depends so you know they've obviously there's been some decisions being made it looks like amd and the X, next Xbox are going to use AMD processors. There is a rumor that was flying around that they could switch to ARM with an NVIDIA GPU, as I said, like the Nintendo Switch. However, personally, I don't think that's gonna happen. This is a guess, but this is my personal feeling at the moment because there would be a backwards compatibility problem because they'd have to spend a lot of time uh, in making software to make sure that they could run the PlayStation 5 games and the PlayStation four games for example previous xbox games on this new setup and of course they did that when they changed processor in the past when they went from the intel to the power pc from mips to power pc and so on. that's all possible but you know if this relationship is working so well and amd have not sat still they're developing new uh you know uh, zen uh, uh, cpus uh, more generations more generations of gpu that would seem to be an extra chunk of work that wouldn't need to be done for no compelling reason, really. There's no compelling reason to switch away from the AMD uh, success at the moment. Okay, so there you go. My quick look at how AMD won the console gaming market. Now, the next generation of consoles are coming. Love to hear from you in the comments below what would be your dream console in terms of the processor, in terms of the CPU and the GPU, what could 
AMD or someone else put in there to make that dream device for you. Do let me know in the comments. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, hey, stick around. Subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.